At the moment, you can pull in data into your Plasmic project in different ways. But in this video, I want to show you how to use our GraphQL data fetcher to pull in data into your Plasmic project. First, let's bring it in from the component store. Search for GraphQL here and select this one. By default, it fetches data from the Rick and Morty API if you look at the URL here. And that is the data we're going to use for this demonstration. The next thing I want to do is write a query to fetch the exact data we want. Luckily, Plasmic features a GraphQL Explorer that makes it easy and intuitive to write your GraphQL queries and fetch the exact data you want. So if you look at the query field here and click on this, it brings up the GraphQL Explorer and you can uh, modify this query however you want. And if you run the query, you should see the data that you requested for right here. Cool. Now that we have data, how do we display it in our project? Well, any element we add inside the fetcher component will have access to the data that we fetched. Then we can use dynamic values to update the elements as we want. So I'm going to go ahead and add a vertical stack inside of this uh, component. And then I'm going to repeat it with respect to the amount of data that we fetched. Here, I fetched 20 characters from the Rick and Morty API. So I'll save that and the vertical stack will repeat according to that data. Cool. Now inside these stacks, I can add, uh, for instance, an image element and dynamically set its value, select current item and select the image. And if I save this, I should now get the images of all the characters I've fetched uh, showing up as I expect. Uh, the next thing I want to do is actually let me make this uh, easier on the eye and use grid to set this to a grid of four columns. And now we, uh, we are seeing it much better. Cool. Uh, the same way we did for images, we can go ahead and add a text. And for this text field, what I want to do is dynamically set its value as well. Uh, from here, use a dynamic value, current item and set it to the name of the characters. And uh, this should update all the names of the characters. Great. Uh, something else to note is that all the GraphQL functionalities will also apply here. So we can update the query to fetch more fields. And let me just show you how to do that. Uh, is in this query, I can, uh, I added an ID before, but I didn't save that. Uh, so let me add that again and actually add uh, maybe status, for instance. And then you can scroll down and save this query. And now uh, if I add another text field here, I should see that if I go to the content and use a dynamic value, current item now has five items because we uh, we fetched IDs and status as well. Uh, so if I wanted, I can set this text element to show the IDs of all the characters. And if I save this, I should see uh, that ID show up in all the characters as well. Something else we can do is actually apply filters to the query as well. So if I come back to the query, we can filter to uh, maybe display only the characters that the species are aliens, uh, for instance. So let's try aliens. Uh, so if I save this query, I should see that I only get the characters that are aliens, like uh, Rick is no longer here. And all of that applies as you would expect. And let me just apply another filter to be sure that it's working as we expect. Uh, so let's change the status and set it to show only the, the characters that are still alive alive and if i save this it will update and show me uh only the rika moti characters that are not dead yet and that is cool all right uh the last thing i want to show you is that we have loading and error states these allow you to customize the error messages or the loading experiences of your users when the data is loading or when you have an error for whatever reason uh, so if I toggle this on, uh, we should get this uh, loading state showing here. And the cool thing about it is you can edit this however you want. Uh, here, you can change the text that is showing on screen 
or better still you can put your own loading uh, spinner here or whatever you really want to do it's completely customizable as you want uh, for instance i can i can actually go ahead and add um, an icon here like a loading icon uh, and for this icon uh, you know what let me just upload yeah i think i've got one locally so let me upload from my computer loading.svg and we have this icon showing up on screen so let me make that a little bit more visible uh, by adjusting the height to 100 pixel and the width to maybe 200 and then uh, we have this loading state showing up now uh, so if for, for whatever reason our data is taking some time to load we can customize the loading state how we want it to look cool uh, let me turn that off and then we'll get our data again the same applies uh, for the error state you can also customize this experience however you want and that is how to use our graphql data fetcher to fetch data in plasmic if you're interested in learning how to use our rest api data fetcher i will link to it in the description of this video see you in the next one bye